that off of our There's so true walls. You all know Wallace paintings? He's one of your great Santa, Santa Cruz journals here. Um, Jerry was a remarkable human being. I, I just can't tell you how, how great it was to run into him and, and spend time talking to him. He was always deferential. He wanted to know what you were reading, wanted to know what you were listening to. And he's trying to pick up stuff, and, and, and his antenna went out. And, he, and he's friendly and funny and wry, but not what they call now snowflake. He used to go have elbows out and stuff. He had uh, arranged the Grateful Dead in a kind of amazing uh, hierarchy. Uh, while the Grateful Dead all agreed that they would never do anything without a unanimous vote so that any one person could stop anything from happening. That wasn't a problem when Jerry was alive. Jerry was in the center of this, and he had it arranged so that everybody brought their ideas to him to pass on. Yeah, that's a good idea. That's not so good. It wasn't that he was telling them what to do. It was they were asking him what they should do. Hugely different personnel management thing. And then let's go back to this thing about, like those guys all thought he was their best friend. And they've got evidence. No, it's real. It's not like a joke. You, you know, I saw him and Mickey together. They were thick as thieves. Bobby, Bobby was brought, raised by the guy. That's Bobby's father. Uh, he, he comes into the band at age 17. He's a dyslexic, uh, uh, a reprobate uh, teenager who's been to seven high schools and still can't graduate, uh, and, <coughs> and is raised by adopted parents and, and, and with, a, with a birth sister. It was all sort of strange. And he walks into that uh, Dana Morgan music and, and, and New, that New Year's Eve, and he found his dad. And Phil and Jerry, they were responsible for all the really crazy, wild uh, musical experiments, like the Ox and Oxo record. That's full Phil and Jerry uh, synthesis. Of, Bill with his classical music and, and, and avant-garde uh, music interest, that, that set off really big things in Jerry's life, too. So they were right. And Kreutzmann, Kreutzmann's entire book is about how Jerry's his best friend, right? Yeah. yeah and so and, and I, so this is like, this. imagine this guy who can be around all these people and leave them all secure in the knowledge that that's my best friend. I don't know. It's a, it's a remarkable personality. Yes, sir. <coughs> Can you talk about the power structure after the period? So that's when everything, the wheels went off, right? There was no power structure. Everything was up for grabs. And the, you're dealing with a bunch of serial contrarians who uh, are, are going to be difficult with each other, difficult with their audience. I mean, Bobby, we're like, what, what we were talking to him, and, and, and you know, why would you do that? You know, they hated Rat Dog. Yeah, you know what he said? You know what he said? Tell him. He said, fuck him. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah, I mean, uh, what a wonderful show this philosophy. <laughs> Uh, you want to know, did we use the UCSC uh, Grateful Dead archives? We did, in fact. I'm, I'm a little disappointed that Nick Merriweather isn't here tonight. I invited him. Uh, he was the guy that started the archive and, and ran and he, and he was there still when we went. Uh, the Grateful Dead archive. Yeah, sort of useful. Yeah, what we discovered in there was, was the papers the, uh, for the museum project. And, and I, don't, I don't want to spoil too much of this for you guys because, you know, that's, that's the second chapter. But there was a whole project of turning, uh, 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 like, well, we don't want to tour anymore. Let's make a museum. And there was a major downtown real estate purchase and huge plans and gigantic, important architects were involved. And then as the power thing started to spin out and became the subject of debate, <laughs> they had another project like that too that could have been iTunes. Could have made everybody rich. But it became the subject of a debate. 
question on something. So this book, have you got any like favorite Jerry interaction or a memory outside? Uh, Jerry. You know, I used to, you know, the, the Jerry, uh, uh, I used to go after shows that I covered and catch the last set uh, at Keystone Berkeley with Merle Saunders. Merle Jr.'s uh, book pass of Yeah, that was who that was, yeah, Merle Jr. Uh, and I love those things. The, the, the uh, band wasn't that good, you know? I mean, you got Legion of Mary. Well, Bill Vitt and, and, and John Kahn, and, I mean, John Kahn wasn't a bass player, he was a dealer. Uh, and uh, 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 the, the, uh, Merle is great, and Jerry was at ease completely. He'd do anything. He'd play for hours, and, and, and he was having a ball, and he wasn't with the dead. You could tell that he'd shed that burden. So that was that was sort of my favorite Jerry moment yeah. was, was Keystone Berkeley last set, you know, getting there around one o'clock. Ever seen the power bells? I did. That's the first interview I did with him was at the Matrix, and there it was Monday night at the at this dumpy club out on uh, uh, Fillmore Street, and uh, he's playing with power bells. Howard's an incredible organ player, and uh, I think there were twenty people in the audience. Roughly what year? That was nineteen seventy. I, I know that. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's good. That's what I mean. We're all here, you know, about the dead. And, and the dead lore is what got me into this. They're so, it's, they're really rich in lore, but it didn't end. The lore continued. Back there, was there. You know there's a big controversy about where Jerry Ashes. Well, that was a fun story, too, yeah. You're, you're not going to believe the story about the ashes of this. <laughs> Well, part of them were, were, were dumped in, in the Ganges, and then part of them were taken out uh, under the Golden Gate Bridge. And again, I don't want to spoil the story for you, but that, that is one. I, and I don't think it's really been reported that, has it? The, 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 the book writer. Oh, no. I yeah. <laughs> it's amazing. Just, it's, it's, you know. Now, sometimes Bobby Weir, just makes things so perfect. And this was one of these moments. Uh, the, the wind blew the ashes all over the boat. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and a lot of people's faces. And, and uh, Bobby wasn't going to leave him. And, and, and then somebody held him by his belt over the side of the boat in six foot swells. And he closed Jerry off. <laughs> so, you can. Uh, I'm, uh, that's just the, the tip of the iceberg. That's a really good story. Yeah. How come you? How come the book is written like the dead are not continuing? Is that just because the book's gone? So uh, that was pretty much their deal. That was that was the, that was the deal behind the fairy laws. You know, no, this we're going to do this. We're going to do this once, and then we're done. Now, again, in the book. Dead and Company is explained. I mean, it comes up in like right around yeah, not year actually. Uh, just in the last minutes, it's sort of an accidental thing that happens, and it, it was like a plan B for a moment because Phil hadn't said yes. So all that happened. Oh uh, no, you know. The, this was the catharsis. This was the thing. This is, you know, whatever goes on now, even if these four guys get back together and, and, and tour again, this is the thing. This is the single biggest one act rock concert in history. You know, biggest grossing, largest number of tickets sold. How do you measure it? If it wasn't a festival, this was number one. And when they first put it on sale, it was it 90 million? 90 million bucks comes out of the sky and lands on the post office at Stinson Beach. That's enough to buy tickets three times what was available. Well, in cashier's checks. <laughs> so, you know, whatever happens, you know, then there will be the Grateful Dead forever. Uh, whatever happens, this was the apex, this was the closure. This was the moment where the Del Curve went to the other side and they're coasting. Yeah? What about the rainbow? I, was about to oh, I forgot to 
you mention the rainbow in my head. Yeah. So uh, that was the rainbow went right behind the shell. Unbelievable timing. And right where Jerry was standing. <laughs> from my well, no, I never saw the rainbow in there. I never saw the rainbow in there. Uh, no, it, it, it was, was, it was outside. outside. You can take a couple times you follow the I assume you must leave, you must even know what Glenn's talking about is that in, at the end of the first set at Levi's, just as they're finishing up the all the blues, the rainbow showed up. Out of nowhere, it wasn't a rainy day, it was just crazy. Well, there were two sprinkles before here, exactly. There were a few sprinkles. Well, the, uh, the, the people that were doing the, uh, uh, the, the, the digital uh, the, uh, display for the show, that's Obscura Digital in San Francisco. They're, it's a fantastic uh, uh, way out there, uh, out there. I've been mean, I mean, over their office, and they have a pool table uh, where uh, the balls leave ripples. Mm -hmm. okay. Give each other the ripple out for uh, And though they, they, I went right to them, right? And said, come on, you guys did that, didn't you? <laughs> and they explained to me, like the idiot I am, no, we don't do that. We need to reflect it off something. <laughs> There's no way we could reflect it off because we were in the stadium and that thing was outside the stadium. Oh, it was an unbelievable thing. Uh, but, uh, the Grateful Dead just—that just happens. Stuff happens to them like that. Uh, uh, the, I can't even remember. I cited a couple of like weird things. I know they played uh, "Tell You Right There" in the harmonic and versions. Oh yeah, Mount St. Helens. Oh. Yeah, yeah. They were—they were playing "Fire on the Mountain" in Portland, Oregon. And a volcano blew up. <laughs> they were playing "Fire on the Mountain" in Ventura when Ventura, when the mountain was burning behind. The stage. <laughs> I was there. Yeah, I had a friend call me from Portland. He was on LSD. <laughs> and, uh, he just was like, I'm back to the hotel. You can't believe this. The sky's full of eggs. The sky's full of eggs. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? Because, <laughs> I mean, frankly, I grew up. Uh, I think if I could have thought of like, one of the least likely things in, that I would see in my lifetime, an active volcano in the continental United States would have been on the top of that list. And here's Zahn on the phone just whacked out of his grave telling me that some mountain is blown up while the dead were playing fire on the mountain. <laughs> <laughs> it's more to life than what we can see. So true, is that the case? Yeah, yeah what was? Sure. Joel, I'm wondering, um, it seems to me Jerry Garcia at the end of his life was one of the most unhealthy human beings in the world. He almost died once, he was a junkie. Um, obviously, no one saw the end coming. Um, why do you think that is? And do you think your story would have turned out differently if somebody would have said we need to make plans in case Jerry's not here? Uh, everything could have turned out differently. Jerry could have lived. Uh, he didn't want to. That's obvious. Uh, I mean, you mentioned the drugs. What about the hot dogs? I mean, that, that guy was just, there was nothing healthy about him. Meat and potatoes. What's that? He was a meat and potatoes guy. Meat and potatoes and, 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 and a tub of hot dogs every night. He needed Wendy's before he left That sounds right, too. No, he was, he, this guy was just not, and, and then also, you, you know, uh, uh, those of you who have experience in the recovery community, you know that families protect addicts. <clears throat> and they live in denial around what's actually going on. And if your addict is making you $50 million a year, you are definitely going to de de deny it and, and avert your eyes. You know, they came back from Soldier Field, what, in uh, like late July? And everybody that was on that plane, everybody, remembers Garcia's uh, falling asleep, wheezing. The entire plane could hear it wheeze. 
they were going out in September, six weeks later. Dates were all booked, everything was, tickets were all sold. And he was going to try to squeeze in Betty Ford in between the two tours. And they made the dates too. No, no, they, they never made the like What What's that? They hired Vince like that. They, they didn't miss it. I don't miss the Oh, well, that was when Brent died. No, I'm talking about when Jerry died. Oh, yeah. My bad. No, that's not that they, uh, they had to be they had told not to play so short on it. Oh, uh, when Brent Mingler died, they had a gig that weekend. Right. And they were going to play it. And it was Bill Graham told them, oh, no, not a good idea. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They're, they're incredibly unsentimental about death. Uh, remember talking to Bobby about Phil in the hospital? Yeah. When Phil collapsed, Everybody was still on the good page together. And they all went to the hospital. And Bobby stood there and looked at this guy. He said he was great and just figured he was dead. Lost another one. Big man, I, I, I interviewed Jerry uh, at uh, an Old in the Way concert the night after Pig Pen's Wake. And uh, yeah, like, yeah, you know. His, his family is pretty square. We had to have our own weight the night before. Uh, but, you know, yeah, I'm, I'm playing banjo. I didn't like it. <laughs> but, uh, and, uh, you know, I, I, I was with Bobby when, uh, when he told me about Vince killing himself. He said, I don't want a hardship trip. But, <laughs> okay. No, there's a, a strangely unsentimental about death. And, and, and you know, with Jerry, uh, they, they just ignored it. it. It's the goose, classic goose with the golden egg story. And I, I, I don't know. They couldn't see it. Plenty of fans could see it. I knew lots of old deadheads who had stopped going to the shows, convinced they were watching Jerry die. His waistline was blowing up. He was sweating like crazy as soon as he got out there. It's just it, 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 the power. No, he looked. Terrible for the last like five, six years of his life. He never really recovered from that uh, from that coma, uh, diabetic coma. 